Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm your host, HK1990, and we're playing another episode here of ESO. And what did we do last episode? Um, I don't remember exactly. Right now we're going to go light some signal fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's see here. We're going the right way. Sorta of, kinda. Sorta of, kinda. Watch out, chicken. Alright, I think we take this pathway here. Like our jukes. Oh, Covenant, huh? Oh! Tough. Tough like a pet. Oh, Mr. Orc. There, Mr. Covenant Bravo. Oh, these crates are empty, huh? One of our guys, maybe? Ooh, we got some rice. Hey, now, oh, goodness. Got some homespun britches. What are you trying to run to? All right. Boo. What are you doing? Spying on us? Very nice. Alright. Just gonna collect this water skin, okay? Don't worry. You're still gonna be dead. Not a not a magic person I'll bring people back from the dead. There's some water skins laying around. What's up with that? Things to loot down there. I got some insinglas, in, in in methaglen, 
epigellum. Got some natural water, some peas, some coomberries. Could be coomberries, but I think it's coomberries. Somebody was writing in a book here. Got water skins. Got natural water in it, I'm sure. We don't want none of that mystic water. Got some ginger. Alright, let's start to light the signal fire here. Guys are back. Don't spend too much time on them. Speed corn. Hey, bro. Some gold and experience. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. Oh no. just too many of them the signifiers live till around what happened the covenant is here they set fire to the village now Rald and i tried to protect the earth turner family and the rest of the farmers where are they denska headed to the bunkhouse ira tried to take shelter in my home then the soldiers set fires laughing please you have to get water save our people I came to warn you, but the troops, they caught up to me. Take it easy. How can I help you? You can't. Don't come back for me. Just get Ira, Denskar, Litrecht, and Trinhild. I didn't see where they went. Rana's at the old tomb. Tell her. Tell her. I forgive her. Goodbye, Tarun. I don't know if she's gonna die or what, but all right, let's go kill some uh, covenant buttholes. Hey, yo, bro, what's up? Are you protecting the water well? Is that what you're doing? You did a great job, sir. Is that? No, that's not the house fire storm out. This is the house fire storm out. Is my one little bucket gonna do it? Slow down for some reason. Uh, how do I do it? Oh. Oh, you like to play with fire, huh? I also like to play. Oh my god, my health. So, I could use some health right now. Just 
flame may just pack a punch. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have just ran through these guys. My health amendment pack, it's uh, get back up there. Uh, hello. <laughs> Should we read a book right now? Of the Dragon Fires fragment. And Alish said, Though we have overthrown the wicked elves, we fear they will afflict us with oblivion. For ever did they traffic with the Daedra Lords, to our sorrow and misery. Mighty are we in arms, but the greater demons are beyond our strength. But the divine voice spake further, saying, This will I do for the mortals of Nern. As thou art dragonborn, so must be thy heirs. So long as they kept the dragonfires ever lit, so long must the demon lords keep to their places. Alish was grateful. He is still troubled. How then, if my line should fail, how will we defend ourselves? And there was a trembling in the world, but the device born was mild, saying, Thy people will find a way. For unlike the Daedra, ye mortals have to create a spark, and may make new things that were not before. Where there is one defense, there may also be. Okay. Against the snakes? Against the snakes by Descar. Been thinking about a fight against the Akavari. I've got opinions. Think I'll write them down. The whole damned war could have been avoided if those idiots in Windhelm had the sense to throw the snakes back into the sea. Sure, take them. Still wish Joran had moved to reinforce Windhelm. Lost some good men that day. Joran fortified Riften. The snakes rolled right past. Why go straight to the Ashlands? The fighting south of Riften, north of Fort Figure, isn't given enough respect. Those men were pinned and outmanned, and they still held. Wolfarth was the only reason the men kept fighting that day. Jerome was just a pup. He couldn't rally a mead hall. The snakes pushed into Stonefall after the fall of Fort Byron. Why? What were they after? Heard rumors some of the Dark Elves turned their blades on the shellbacks at first. Couldn't stand the thought of being rescued by Argonians. Damn fools. Sure take the whole snake island. Let them send another tiger demon. We'll take them again. Alright then. Uh, do, do I, wait. Or, um, I'm gonna take it. Oh, there he is over there. I was wondering where he was. I guess I guess I was gonna say anything. You know what? I should talk to him. The soldiers chased me in here. I thought I might burn alive. You can make it if you run. Hurry, get to the tomb. I can make it. Thank you. You can make it. Go, go, run. All right, now that he's out of here. Ode to Oinkers by Littrick. I'm not reading this. I, I am, I am. Pink piggy friends, grunt and squeal and dig. Do your best today, for tomorrow you will be in my tummy. Why do you taste so good, piggy friends? How does Mother's cook pot transform you? One day you sneak of dirt, the next you smell like the fields of Sovngarde. <laughs> Never change, piggy friends. As sisters change and grow bossy, as mothers nag and push, as fathers moan and grumble, remain like you are. Delicious. Hey, I like that one. Alright, yeah, we're robbing this place. Notes on racial... Pologony? Third edition by the Council of Healers, Imperial University. After much analysis of living specimens, the Council long ago determined that all races of elves and humans may mate with each other and bear fertile offspring. Generally, the offspring bear the racial traits of the mother, but some traces of the father's race may also be present. 
it is less clear whether the Argonians and Kachid are infertile with both humans and elves, though there may have been reports throughout the eras of children from these unions, as well as stories of unions with Daedra, there have been no well-documented offspring. Khajiit differ from humans and elves in not only their skeleton demophysiology, the fur that covers their bodies, but their metabolism and digestion as well. Argonians, like the Drew, appear to be a semi-aquatic, troglophile form of humans, though it is by no means clear whether the Argonians should be classified with Drew, Men, Mare, or, in this author's opinion, certain tree-dwelling lizards in Black Marsh. The reproductive biology of orcs is at present not well understood, and the same is true for goblins, trolls, harpies, drew, saluska, Mega, various phaedra, and many others. Certainly there have been cases of intercourse between these races. Yeah, okay. Generally in the nature of rape or magical seduction, but there have been no documented cases of pregnancy. Still, the infertility of these creatures and the civilized hominoids have yet to be empirically established or refuted likely due to the deep cultural differences. Surely any normal Bosma or Breton impregnated by an orc would keep that shame to herself? And there is no reason to suppose that an orc maiden impregnated by a human would not be likewise ostracated by her society. Regrettably, our oaths as healers keep us from forcing a coupling to satisfy our scientific knowledge. We do know, however, that the slow of Thras or Humiphrodites in their youth and later is reabsorb their reproductive organs once they are old enough to move about our own land. It can be safely assumed that they are not infertile with men or mare. One might further wonder whether the proper classification of these same races, to use the imprecise but useful term, should be made from the assumption of a common heritage and the differences between them have arisen from magical experimentation. The manipulations of the so-called earth bones are from gradual changes from one generation to the next. Wow, man! Not, uh... Yeah, not what I was going for. Not the kind of literature I was looking for to be... To be. Uh, oh. Well, we can fix that. Uh, I gotta figure out how to fix that. We should probably turn that on. We're gonna turn that off for now. Because I'm trying to steal this place. I mean... Why wouldn't I try to steal this stuff? Not like anybody's gonna see me. Another. Oh, it's just a to-do list. We're not. We're not reading to-do lists. All right. Bro, I was doing something. You interrupted me. No, come here. Don't run away. You don't even like fire. Actually, I could probably do a reboot. I just want to turn this thing back on. Yeah, there we go. Come on, big guy. Stop running. Man, y'all are all over the place now, huh? I guess I don't need another bucket of water. What's 
What's that? What's all about a good attack? I couldn't hear you over getting your butt whooped. Come back. Oh, it's trying to run away. Slash. Oh my god, we're gonna rob another house. Hello. Oh my god. Fundamentals of Alchemy by Alandon Mathari. Often overlooked by aspiring mages, alchemy is a time-honored, rewarding disciple, this discipline that can change the lives of those who master it. It is difficult and often dangerous to advance one's knowledge of the materials used in alchemy formulas, but continued study and hard work will, in the end, reward the alchemist greatly. Before success can be achieved or even attempted, the beginning alchemist must understand the basic principles behind this craft. Many items in our world must be organic in nature can be broken down into one or fundamental essences with magical properties. The more skilled the alchemist, the more properties of an ingredient that can be harnessed. Combining the essence of two or more ingredients can result in a creation of a potion, which anyone may then drink. Legend has it that a truly great alchemist can brew potions from a single ingredient, a feat well beyond the capabilities of most. The alchemist's potion can have several effects depending on the ingredient used, and not all effects are beneficial. In many cases, recipes, recipes result in a potion with a mix of positive and negative effects. It is up to the alchemist to determine which recipes yield the best results. It is worth noting that potions can be created to have only negative effects and be used as poisons. This practice is not recommend, recommended by the author, and this text shall not discuss such potions further. Wardcraft. Wardcraft is, in fact, amateur alchemy. Eating an ingredient requires grinding it against the teeth, which occasionally releases the simplest essence and results in a fleeting effect on the eater. Wardcraft never has a strong a result as a potion creating using the proper tools. An alchemist's tools, the mortar and pedestal, is the alchemist's most important essential tool. Without it, no ingredient can be correctly prepared for use in a potion. The budding alchemist is advised to keep a mortar and pedestal on hand at all times and become comfortable with its use early on. The simple grinding of an ingredient is the most fundamental step in brewing potions. When properly ground, the petals of the redwort flower yield a powder that can, when mixed correctly with another ingredient, such as ginseng, create a potion to cure poisons. This is one formula that many alchemists are quick that many alchemists are quick to learn and retain, as mistakes in potion making often require its use. The advanced alchemist has other tools at his disposal to improve the quality of his potions. A retort can be employed to purify the mixture, improving the positive effects of a potion. Washing the mixture through an Olympic helps it distill the potion, producing any negative effects. And a calcinator can be used to burn away impurities in the mixture, increasing the potency of all the potion's effects. While these apparatus are not necessarily to create potions, it is advised that they are be used whenever possible. Ingredient Combination A potion is only as good as its ingredients. Only those with identical effects need to be combined to make a potion. Up to four ingredients may successfully use a single potion. As the, gain, as the alchemist gains skill in preparing ingredients, new properties may be discovered and can be used in creative potions. While this can be an exciting time expanding the al alchemist's repertoire, he should take care to check carefully which effects his potion will contain when he is done brewing. Many established recipes may have new results, not all of which are beneficial. Whew. Are you on the bookshelf? The soldiers are everywhere. Where's Tilrani? I thought I'd be safe with her. Uh, Tilrani's not here. Hurry, run to the tomb. I bet she's there now. I'll see her there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have the heart to tell her that she's not coming. Anywho. All right. Uh, let's turn that back off. <laughs> okay. Heavy armor forging. Heavy armor must be designed to take a lot of punishment. It will receive direct, ro direct blows from all sorts of weapons while protecting the wearer. Leather strips are used to make the straps and binding in all armor. 
Iron and steel are easy to work. Just heat them up and pound them into shape. The heat of the forge is not that critical. Avoid filing any of the metal. Always try to conserve the metal and work it back into shape. Iron armor requires a large number of iron ingots. A smith might need a couple of dozen to complete a full set of iron armor. Steel armor primary uses steel ingots, but some iron is used as well. Dwarven armor is made from a dwarven metal. The secret of this material was lost when the dwarves disappeared millennia ago. Now it can only be found as scrap in the ruins of their abandoned cities and fortresses. Orcish armor requires large amounts of auriculum melded into a bit of iron. Heat should be used sparingly, at least to become brittle. The orcs are masters of this technique, but it can be learned by any smith with patience and skill. Steel plate mail is made by adding steel to molten corundium. The alloy is stronger than either metal by itself. Corundium is a thickly material requiring the heat from the forge to be steady and not very much. Ebony can be only worked when heated. It will develop small cracks that eventually shatter the material if hammered cold. Unlike most other armors, ebony will not alloy with iron. It must be used pure. I can only tell you the tales of how to make Daedric armor. I have never seen it myself, nor do I know anyone that has. Stories say that it should always be worked on at night, ideally under a new or full moon, and never during an eclipse. A red harvest moon is best. Ebony is the principal material, but at the right moment, a Daedric heart must be thrown into the fire. Alright. Letter to Cyan, my stalwart sister. The three find you well, I hope. I have much to tell you. We've undertaken a full-scale irrigation project on the south side of town. One of the Argonians has shown us how to improve the ditch water system in place. We miss you here, Cyan. One person leaving a small town like ours leaves a big gap to fill. Cyan, know we think of you often. I'm so proud of you, of you to be your brother. I know you're fighting for the safety of the pact and that you're making Father proud at Fix side. Just remember, you always have a home here. When the campaign ends, rest easy. No, you still have a bump. Faithfully, stand there. Oh, he's so nice. He's so nice. The Legend, the Legendary Sancrete, Tour First Edition, by Matara Chapel. During the Skyrim Conquest, 20 to 40 to 415, ambitious Highland earls, envious of the conquest and wealth. Of their northern cousins in high rock and more wind, looked south over the ramparts of Jarrell Mountains for their opportunities. The Jarrell Mountains proved to be too great a barrier, and northern Cyrodiil too poor a prize to reward full scale Nord invasions. However, Alicia hired many ambitious Nord and Breton warbands as mercenaries with the promises of rich lands and trade concessions. Once settled among the victorious Elysian Cyrodiils, the Nord and Breton warriors and battle majors were quickly assimilated into the comfortable and prosperous Nibonese culture. Elysia received the divine inspiration for her slave rebellion at San Creator, and here she founded her holy city. San Creator's mines provided some wealth, but the poor soils and harsh climate of the remote mountain site meant it must be supplied with food and goods from the heartlands. Further, located on one of the few passes through the Jarals, its fortunes were subject to the instability of relationships with Skyrim. When relations were good with Skyrim, they prospered through trade and alliance. When relations were bad with Skyrim, it was vulnerable to siege and occupation by the Nords. With the decline of the Elysian Order circa 1E 2321, the seat of religious rule of Cyrodiil moved south to the Imperial City. The Sancreator remained a mountain fortress and major religious center. Elysia historians asserted that Sancreator was magically concealed and defended by the gods. Records of Sancreator's repeated defeats and occupations by the Nord invaders give the lie to this give the lie to this assertion. The interest of the Cyrodiil was indeed concealed by sorcery, and the Citadel and its labyrinth subterranean complex were defended by magical traps and illusions, but their secrets were portrayed to besiege besieging Norris by the Breton enchanters who crafted them. One enduring feature of the legend of Sancretor is the ancient tombs of the Remain Remen emperors. Following the defeat of the first Akbari invaders, Sancretor enjoyed a brief 
resurgence of wealth and culture under Roman Cerradale and his descendants, Roman II and Roman III, tracing his ancestry to St. Elysia and following the tradition that St. Elysia was buried in the catacombs beneath St. Cretor, Roman built splendid funerary precedents to the depths of the ancient Cerradale under passages. Here, the last Roman emperor, Roman III, was buried in his tomb with the Amulet of Kings. How was that? How? How did he get buried with that? Sacred Tor has lain in ruins since the middle of the Second Age, and the surrounding region is virtually uninhabited. Now, communications with the north are through the passage passes at Corel and Buma. And Sacred Tor's citadel and other passages have become the refuge of various savage goblin tribes. Additional note, there is a competing tradition that St. Elysia is buried on the side of the temple of the one in the Imperial City. The actual resting place of St. Elysia is unknown. So, hold on, here's a question. How could that Roman III guy be buried with the Amulet of Kings? Well, we know for a fact that later on, we know that the uh, future emperors have the Amulet of Kings. Hmm, suspicious. Suspicious, suspicious lies. Anywho, let's keep stealing things because apparently, apparently I enjoy that a little more than I should on video games, of course. Uh, tell Ronnie, the hunters and I can't keep up with the demand in the winter months. There are too many open mouths now. Some of them are wider than others. The town is well funded by a wind town. We'll maybe take a run up on our offer to hire outside help during the next cold snap. A few extra hands from the guild could mean the difference between eating and hungry berries. Darge. Yeah, he's really gonna have some issues now with his one leg having himself. Alright, looks like we're done in here. Excuse me, fella. Oh, man. I didn't realize it <laughs> Knocked you around, didn't he? No! No! You killed the pig? That's it. Now you better... You you better you better hold on to your hat, sir. Killed my pig. That was my buddy. You. Oh my God! You've killed the chickens too. You maniac! You blew it up. You blew it up. That's what y'all get for killing the pigs in the. No! No! <laughs> they killed that pig too. I. I am angry now. I am angry. Who's attacking me? You have angered me. Hey, bro. I just couldn't help it. I ran. I'm sorry. You're going to be safe. Quickly, run to the tomb. Kind protect me. Thank you. I'll go. Alright, go. Oh. oh. Okay. Let me steal these. Oh my god. Alright. This is for the pig. This is for a chicken. This is for the other chicken. This is for another pig. Yep. Idiot. Oh, oh my god, they killed the cow? Not little Betty Sue. You killed Betty Boo Sue and Boo Too. No, you've killed them all. What is wrong with y'all? Y'all are monsters. Even the danger wouldn't have been this terrible a thing. I'm sorry, little cows and chickens. I'm so sorry. Alright, we gotta go save China Hill. I love your haircut, but no, come back, come back, don't do that. Yeah, you had a great haircut, but I still had to put you down. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, you should, I don't think you're as cool as you think you are. I'm pretty sure I've seen you from a, of a, a cartoon. You're not my supervisor. Alright, moving on.
Alright. Since y'all like fire so much, I'm gonna help y'all out with the fire. Oh. I'll just grab me a quick drink right here. Get some nice clear water. Mmm, clear water. Yo, bro, what's up? Doing there. Tirani told us to run. I thought of the water and all those calm days in the surf. What was I thinking? Ah, your family is gathering at the tomb. Quick, run. Yes, my family. I should go to them. Here I go. Here you go. Ah. My dudes? Yeah, he's my dudes. Man, y'all be kicking Covenant butt. Welcome back. The villagers you rallied are ready to move. Then we've done everything we can. I just wish we could have done more. Well then, are you ready to get off this rock? Yes, let's go. You and I are going to lead the way through the tomb. The locals call it Last Rest. Darge and Sane are going to bring up the rear. We'll make sure everyone keeps moving. Are you sure we can make our way through? Tripunal willing. I've studied a map of the tomb's layout, but I never dared to enter. This place is old. The original inhabitants of Bleak Rock rest inside. And not quietly. Ugh. What are we waiting for, then? Alright, let's go kill some, uh, zon oh my god, I'm out. I don't think that guy made it. Why don't he just go around? Oh. Uh, do I need to go over there? I'm going over here anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got tricked. There's nothing over here. It was, it was a big trick, too. Ooh. Oh. Oh my god, this is so bad. I should have went. Okay. Yo, bro, what happened? I can't activate that. Not real. Pretty sure I'm supposed to activate it. Why can I activate it? Oh, I was supposed to talk to Captain Rana first? Oh my god. I'm such an idiot. Okay. Two switches will shut these traps off. We need to hit them at the same time. Get the one on the far wall. I'll hit mine when you do. Okay, where's your switch at? Dodge, bring them through. If we get everybody through, we should activate that switch again, right? So the Covenant can follow us. Oh, hi, Rex. Us. What are they here? So many dead because of me. I don't know if I'll be able to live with myself after this. The villagers need you to leave them to safety. They need a leader, but they're stuck with me. Hey, where do we go from here? I need you to unlock a door deeper inside the tomb. That door will have stones with flower symbols upon it. 
Head through the door behind me. I'll see you soon. All right, we got this. So I gotta go through here anyway. That's cool. Oh my! Maybe if I don't look at him, he won't see me. <laughs> that was my strategy, I guess. Hey, guy. That's a statue. Okay. No friendly conversation for you then. I mean, we can explore a little bit. The covenant's not that well. I guess technically it is that close. Let's see, they have. Oh, I can't get to the arrows. That's annoying. Oh, I can get to these, but they're up deep. Oh, I can open this one. Design Nord Urn Ceramic and Nickels. Oh, we got some up here too. Pewter Necklace. And yes, I'm going back to check to make sure I didn't miss any on top of here. See, I did. Oh, that is such bull crap. Okay. Stuck. We got some natural water in there. Mmm. Cave water. No. Mmm. Undead water. Yo, bro, what's up? You just sit there and take a nap, buddy. Try not to worry about all the things I'm gonna steal out of here that I find. Ooh, I got some ass. Somebody's ash. Took their dead body of ash. Ooh, I got some decorative wax. Some more butt ash. Can't open these. They must be broken. Alright, what was that? Oh. Alrighty then. Oh, I totally missed you there, dude. Sorry about that. Have a nice nap. What is this? Broken. Mm, can't open that. Ah, the Book of Circles, Lordus Maximus, by Fredor Hundi. Thus, on Lordus, faithful ones, do we consider these maximums of the master? Train your opponent to make the wrong response. The worst action executed with vigor is superior to the best action executed timidly. A thrust is elegant and a cut is powerful, but sometimes the bright action is a headbutt. The high guard is most suitable for feints and crossovers, but mind your nether limbs. Your opponent's sword is not your enemy. Watch your opponent, not his sword. Perfection in the eight basic cuts is critical. Though you will never use them in battle. A closed line is not open. What? I just broke my brain a little bit, but okay. Why would you sit there? No, Mr. Pony, don't do it. Oh, dead pony. Left or right? Doesn't matter. Yep, no, it didn't matter at all. A uh, single bit. Hello, dude. Oh, wait. Can I open this? What about this one? That was already empty. Hey, man. I was busy. Alright, starting to be a little bit of amazing here. That's okay. Got some ash there. It could be worse. I don't think I can open those. I don't find a single one of those I can open. Alright, there's a there is a thing you do. Get through this kind of thing. Just keep going left. Eventually, we're supposed to make it out.
We're also exploring, so making it out isn't like our top priority, but it sort of is. Ah. I mean, there's the door. We could literally just go out the door, but uh, what fun is that? Oh, there's multiple doors. So maybe not the right door? Yep. A lock pick. Some obsidian in a lock pick. Lower halls. Well, let me. Well, let me open it. That's okay. That's the true way out. Maybe it was all right. bunch of rights and got here but that's okay you know what it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this is this is where we're supposed to be going right this way sure take a right up here and we'll be out matter of fact i won't beat you to it oh you're, you're gonna have to stop there okay we're almost out I'll unlock the door at the bottom of the stairs. In the next room, there's another switch I'll need you to trigger. Surprise, surprise! Alright, let's go. Man, this is a big old room. You said a switch, you didn't say a room a switch. Necromancy and modern tamarind. Uh, away from the Mesquite Lorekeeper. Eternal slumber was once taken for granted, but now necromancy has appeared in numerous locations across Tamriel. Anonymous spies have pinpointed the cult of the Black Worm as the city's force responsible. This sect, once hidden from view, is spreading and offers a weak will that seems a what seems a guaranteed rise of power. Its chief opposition is the Mage's Guild, but with the Guild in disgrace in Cyrodiil and banished from the Imperial City. The Order of the Black Worm seems ascendant. Hidden cells of these necromancers are called Worm Nests, led by a priest of undeath who takes the mantle of Worm Ancret. Such priests may even have converted to undead form, after which they're called Worm Eremites. They're never apart from undead protectors, either summoned or reanimated. The leader of this cult is the Altmer Mage Manamarco, whose name is never spoken aloud by the cultists. He's instead invoked with a whisper as the King of Worms. No more must be written about him. His tendrils of power influence snake far and wide. Eh. What's up, dude? Alright, go back to sleep for me. Take you a wee nap. Ooh. Surely there's something in here. A lockpick. Glad I opened that. Oh, run. Stop that. The iron battle axe of shock. Fighting somebody up there? Doesn't matter. Father of the Nibian, Fragment 1. Incorporating Fragment 1 translated in with a commentary by Florin Jalman. Introduction. Writing the biography of anyone is a challenge. Usually the problem lies in assessing one's sources. Comparing the prejudice of one chronicle versus another versus another, there is but one record of the man called Topal the Pilot. The earliest known Alamar explorer Tamriel, only four short verse fragments of the epic Father of the Nibian have survived to the present day, but they offer an interesting if controversial look at the middle metric era when Topiel the pilot may have sailed the seas around Tamriel. Though Father of the Nibian is the only written record of Topiel the pilot's voyages, it is not the only proof of his existence. Among the treasures of the Great Crystal Tower of Somerset Isle are his crude but fascinating maps, his legacy of all Tamriel. The translation of the Adamari Hoover and Navari father of the Nivian is my own, and I accept that other scholars may disagree with some of the choices of words. I cannot promise my translation lives up to the beauty of the original, 
I have only strived for simple coherence. Fragment 1. Second ship, the Pasconel, manned by pilot Ilio, was to follow the southern pointing waystone, and the third, the Nivian, manned by pilot Topal, was to follow the northeast pointing waystone. The others from the Crystal Tower, they were to sail far forth for eight moons and then return to Tell. Only Nivian returned to first hold, laden high with gold and spice and fur and strange creatures, dead and live. Though, alas, old El. El Nuffery? So Paul never found, he told the tales of the lands he had visited to the wonderment of all. For 66 days and nights he sailed over crashing waves of dire intent, past whirlpools through mist that burned like fire, until he reached the mouth of a great bay and he landed on a sun-kissed meadow of gentle dwells. As he and his men rested, there came a fearsome howl, and hideous orcs streamed forth from the murky glen, cannibal teeth clotted with gore. For centuries, strange crystalline balls were unearthed at the sites of ancient Aldermary shipwrecks and docks, peculiar artifacts of the Metric and Dawn eras that puzzled archaeologists until it was demonstrated that each had a tendency to rotate on its axis in a specific direction. There were three varieties, one that pointed southward, one that pointed northeast, and one that pointed northwest. It is, understood, it is not understood how they work, but they seem attuned to particular lines of power. These are the waystones of the fragment which one of these pilots used to point their craft in the direction they were assigned to go. A ship with a name not mentioned in the fragment took his vessel northwest toward Thras and Yakuta. The Pasconel took the southern waystone and must have sailed down toward Pyandornia. Topal and his northwest waystone found the mainland of Tamriel. It is clear from this fragment what the three ships were assigned to do, find a passage back to old El Nufri so that the Admir, now living in Somerset, could learn what became of their old homeland. As this book is intended to be a study of Topal the pilot, there is scarcely room to dedicate to different theories of the automatic exodus from old El Nari. If I was using this poem as my only source, I would have to agree with the scholars who believe in the tradition that several ships. Sir, I was in the middle of reading a book. with a scholar who believed in the tradition that several ships left Old Elfrey and were caught in a storm. Those who survived found their way to Somerset Isle, but without their waystones, they did not know what direction their homeland was. After all, what other explanation is there for three ships heading in three opposite directions to find a place? Naturally, only one of the ships returned, and we do not know if either or both the other two found Old Elfrey, or perished at sea, or at the hands of the ancient Pyananese, Slowed, or Yokorian, so we must assume, unless we think the Aldemir particularly yet I, but at least one of them must have been pointing in the right direction. It may well have been Topal and he simply did not go northeast far enough. So Topal setting sail from first hold has northeast, which coincidentally is the longest one can travel along the obvious sea without striking land of any kind. Had he traveled straight east, he would have struck the mainland somewhere in what is now the Colvian West of Sierra in a few weeks. Had he traveled southeast, he might have reached the hump of Allenwood in a few days. Our pilot, judging by his own and all the modern maps, sailed in a straight line northeast through the Sea and the Alec Bay, before touching ground somewhere near present-day right Broadkey in two months' time. The rolling Verdian hills of southern High Rock were unmistakable in the verse recognized uh, to anyone who had been there. The question, of course, is what to be made of this apparent reference to orcs occupying the region. Tradition has it that all the orcs were not born until after the Alderman had sailed the mainland, uh, they sprung up at a distant race following the famous battle between Trimanok and Bofian at the time of Rusden. Oh my gosh, you guys have been fighting this entire time and it's, it's making me annoyed. Yeah, okay, so we're going to skip some book reading because these guys are being jerkwads. Which I hate. I like reading the books. It's important to me. No, no. If I can't read my books, you don't get to pray. Sure, just cut all that noise down. Are you just gonna stand there? Oh my god. Break the Silo of Tyranny by Ala Lalong. The brash young kingdoms of the Covenant want to reestablish the Empire of Men. 
They are too callow and immature to realize that the Empire was a failed experiment whose time has passed. Now is the time of crisis for all of Naren and Tamriel cannot afford to have these unlearned barbarians destabilizing Cyrodiil and jeopardizing our efforts to stave off world destroying doom. The Ebonheart Pact will not allow the Daggerfall Covenant to establish another bloody handed dynasty of the Imperial Tyrants. Oh. Huh. Time and again throughout history, armies of men have marched in, in from the realm of Tamriel to conquer its center, enjoying a brief moment of power before sliding in the end of discord and decay. It's time to break this destructive cycle once and for all. We need to defeat the armies of the Covenant, dispose, depose their kings, and bring their chastened and successors into a new Tamriel Pact, where wiser heads shall prevail. So, sounds to me like the Ebonheart Pact doesn't want to reestablish an empire, but the Covenant does? Hmm. Interesting. I did not know that. I... I feel completely oblivious to this game sometimes. You know what though? Okay, so 55 minutes, 56 minutes to be exact. Um, this episode is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but hey, why not, right? We're having a good time. I hope I am. I am. I don't know about you. Hope you are. I'm loving it. But I've been your host, HK1990, and this has been another episode of ESO. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that bell icon, and until next time, be ready to play. See you later.